What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ordale and in today's video we're going to be covering an offbeat but underrated option for the E4 player trying to find a response against the French defense. This is a system that I've been playing for a few years. It's a lot of fun, very easy to learn, but hard for the French defense player to refute and go against. We're actually not going to play this move of D4 to start things off, but we're instead going to play Knight F3. And here, if you see the move d5, which is probably what you're going to see just about every game, because the whole point of playing e6 is to play the French defense with d5. Here, we're going to play e5 and against c5 again. There's just simply going along the line of French defense players, right? The whole point of the French against the advanced variation is to play e6, preparing d5, and then against e5 to play c5, pile up pressure on that d4 pawn and try to gain some counter-attacking chances, right? But in this instance, we're kind of going to throw a wrench into the opponent's plans by playing b4, reaching the wing gambit against the French, right? Putting some pressure on c5. The main move that we're going to be covering in this video is if black takes on b4, but I did want to quickly mention this move of knight c6, and that's because I see it all the time. And if you look up the stats online, it's actually played quite a bit, and I'm a little bit confused on why. To me, it's never seemed like a great move. Maybe it's because of bullet. Maybe it's because of blitz. Maybe it's because black here is just going with their usual game plan. They haven't really seen this move hardly at all. They're ready to just capture back on c5. All that being said, though, we play d4 and realize what we just did from a strategic standpoint. Right? Black does not have a pawn on c7. We don't have a pawn on b2. This is a great trade for us. Just like in general, it's a good idea to trade a c pawn for a d pawn early on in the game. This pawn on c7 is extremely valuable. I would say the most valuable pawn for the French defense player once that advanced variation setup is reached. Right, And that's because black wants to play c5. Right, Pile up pressure on that pawn on d4, but they simply can't do that now. We're missing a pawn on b2, which probably wasn't going to do much for quite a while. Right, so this is a great trade. We could play this move c3, and we're definitely going to at some point, but I would say that at this point in time, I'm a big fan of this move of bishop d3, right? Just prioritizing development, looking at h7, looking at h6. Our queen's also looking towards the king side of the board. And okay, I mean, here if black tries to win the pawn on d4, they're actually going to lose more material than they get out of it, right? If they take on d4 with the knight, we capture back. Throw in a check, a little discovery action against the bishop. You can block if you want, but we take again with a check. And here we're simply up a piece for a pawn, right? Going back to that move, bishop d3. Sometimes you may see black go, okay, well, I'm going to take with the bishop so that my knight prevents a check on b5. But now we have the powerful move queen g4 attacking both the knight and this pawn on g7. And notice when this pawn falls, so will the rook, right? And black simply can't stop both. Okay, I mean, in fact, the computer recommendation is knight takes c2, just getting something back for the knight. Even then, we're up a piece for two pawns, and we're up in development, which is great for white. Here, if black tries to hang on to everything with knight f5, we just take the knight off, right? Take on g7, say thanks for the rook. White here is crushing this game. So going back to b4, again, if you see knight c6, right, take on c5, play a quick d4, bishop d3, and you should be in business. And don't worry about losing the pawn on d4 because you're going to get a piece back in return, sometimes even more. What do we do against this move of c takes on b4? Well, we're now going to do what we just did again. We're going to play this move of a3, the main move here for black. The most popular one is b takes. And in a lot of ways, this kind of reminds me of a banco gambit. Okay, if you guys are familiar with the banco, you know, it's really this system for black against d4, in which case black plays b5 at one point, distracting the c pawn, and then a6, distracting the then b pawn. And basically what black gets out of it is an open a and b file. On top of that, they get an advantage in development, and that's exactly what we get as white, right? Later on in this game, a rook on a1 and a rook on b1 would be extremely well placed. And on top of that, we're really trying to ground central control. In fact, right now, we're not in a rush to take this pawn. We're instead going to play the move of d4. Okay, there's really no rush to take this guy. He's on our side of the board. We're attacking it with three different pieces. It is defended once, but who cares, right? We have three attackers. Even if you play queen a5 at some point, I mean, this pawn can fall at some, you know, really whenever we want to take it. So I'm not too worried about that. I really recommend prioritizing development. Take up that center. Here, if you see a move like knight c6, solidify the center. Notice just how strong these three pawns are, particularly the pawn on d4. And also just notice how hard it is for black to develop, right? This bishop is having a hard time finding a home. Okay, it could go to e7 because obviously these other three squares 
are taken, but the moment that the bishop comes to e7, the knight can't go anywhere except h6. And in that case, we have the option of capturing the knight right off and messing up black's pawn structure, right? So this is a very good opening, not just in longer time controls, but in blitz as well, because it's, it's hard for black to figure out how on earth to maneuver their pieces here. I would say that the best try is probably if black moves the knight out to f5 or g6 and then tries to move the bishop. But as you'll see, we can make this knight a target in a kingside attack. Let's say here black plays move bishop d7. We play bishop d3 and now a6. Now we have a couple of different options. I'm just going to give you both of them so that you can decide which one you like the most. The first one is just playing a move here like knight takes a3. Right, this is what I recommend instead of bishop takes. Due to the fact, let's just go back one move. If bishop takes a3, notice that black can simply capture us off, and all of a sudden black's feeling a little bit less cramped. Right, they can develop the knight, castle kingside, and they should be fine. And okay, I mean, this is playable for white, but in a lot of ways, I'm looking at this knight and I'm kind of wishing that it was a bishop. Okay, if you've watched my videos, you know I'm a big fan of the knights, but in this particular instance, that bishop on a3 would simply be a monster. The knight at the moment is pretty neutralized by the pawn on d5 and the pawn on a6. So going back, if you see a6, capture back with the knight. Again, if black wants to take on a3, we now take with the bishop, and sure, black is a little bit less cramped, but they still have issues here, right? If they castle, they're not going to be able to move the knight without losing the rook. If they move the knight right now, they're not going to be able to castle. I suppose you could play castling kingside, rook e8, and then move the knight, but that takes quite a bit of time. And here in this instance, I would recommend the move of queen b1. This is the computer move. It puts some pressure on h7, right? It puts some pressure on b7 as well. And it's just a good reminder, right, that the b1 square isn't just available for our h1 or our a1 rooks. It's also available for the queen to get into the action, right? So that's also very fun to play. So all that said, going back to knight takes a3, bishop takes is just not very recommended. The bishop captures back, and black's going to have a very much uphill battle for the rest of this game with the bishop. I mean, covering squares like c5, d6, e7, f8. Very hard to play for black, and they're only up a pawn. Let's say here black plays a move like knight g e7, right? Well, we're now just going to castle kingside, right? We can castle kingside, and here if we move like knight g6, we got to make this knight a target, right? Black here is trying to unravel their setup, become a little bit less cramped. Let's start pushing our pawns. g3 and h4 is one of my favorite setups here. We have two pairs of these kind of kingside facing pawn chains, right? Facing towards the kingside facing towards the king's side, and we're simply making up space. We're looking to play the move of h5. What happens here if black plays h5 themselves, g5 is even more of a weakness than it was before. As you're going to see, knight g5 is a possibility that we could have played earlier in the game. Now we definitely got to play this move. We're just putting a lot of pressure on black here, pressure on g6 as well. And if you want to take the knight off the board, okay, we'll take back with the bishop. And I think that this line serves as a reminder of the fact that a6 doesn't really stop us from playing knight b5 in the fact that if this rook is not defended, knight b5 is available, right? We're attacking the queen. If the queen moves, we have knight d6 with check, absolutely crushing position. And if you take on b5, which is the computer move, we take on a8 with over a plus 5 edge, right? Simply crushing here for white. So I just wanted to mention that idea, kind of similar to the delayed wing gambit, a6 doesn't really stop knight b5 as long as the rook on a8 is undefended. Okay, so going back to this move of h4, let's say black plays a move like castling king said, we're now going to play h5, kick that knight back, queen c2, and uh, again, just notice all the pressure that we're putting on the king side of the board. So this is really the first option that you have, right? Capture back with the knight, castle king side, start pushing those pawns, make that knight a target, push it back. Here, if a move like g6, saving their pawn, we can play bishop h6, king g2, a rook sliding on h1. This is some really fun attacking chess that we have ahead of ourselves. So going back to the move of a6, knight takes a3 is definitely an option. Another option that you could play here is knight g5, very aggressive, going after the king side right away. The most popular option online, which has been played hundreds of times, is this move of h6, right? And at first sight, it makes sense. We're attacking this pawn twice. You can't easily defend it with a move like knight f6, unless, of course, you just want to say bye to your knight. This move of h6 seems as if you can just, you know, kick that knight right back. But now we have the move of knight takes f7, and white is simply crushing this game, right? 
I mean, if the king doesn't take on f7, we're going to win either a queen or a rook. And if the king does capture on f7, we're going to throw in a check on h5, right? g6 here, black could play it, but really it just prolongs the game because black's going to have to play king e7 anyways. And if they do play the king over to the left one square, remember, this bishop doesn't just face this diagonal, but it can go this way as well, right? Take on a3 with check, the knight has to block, and we just won the game at move 13. So going back to this this really you know position where we have knight g5 and we're putting a lot of pressure on h7 and just the king side in general black here would be smart to think about options right think about options like g6 right or even bishop e7 in this case i really like h4 just continuing to advance on the king side again if you want to play h6 we have queen h5 and you know it's not as crushing for white but it's definitely very strong over a plus one edge and here if you capture back with the bishop we take with the h pawn continuing to pile the pressure on h7 and this pawn on g5 is a nuisance for black to have to deal with right so that's another option that you have at your disposal in this kind of position right if they continue to take your pawns really prioritize taking up the center playing c3 getting that bishop out and from that point you have two different approaches, right? You can take back with the knight on a3 and castle kingside and just start advancing with moves like g3 and h4, or you could really go for it with a move like knight g5. Now, going back to this position, if black takes, we're taking up the center, right? No doubt about it. I did want to mention, if you see something like knight c6, for example, we're still going to take up the center. Even against the move of queen a5, we're still going to play the move of d4 right? I mean, I suppose black could take on a3 with check, but at that point, they're kind of just getting the same setup, and we can make that queen a target, right? On top of that, if here we see a move like knight c6, we can continue developing with bishop d3. I just wanted to mention this queen a5 line. It's hardly ever played in online chess, but I do think that it's one of black's better tries against this. But okay, we're just going to continue developing as usual, castling kingside, if you move the knight, we can play bishop d2 now. This is my favorite move, kind of pinning that pawn to the queen. And there's just a lot of ways for black to go wrong here, right? We're going to continue putting pressure on b4. We're also going to be looking at c3 break ideas. For example, let's say black plays something like knight f5, which is the most popular option in online chess. Take that knight off. And notice when we do this, if you ever have a wing gambit position against the French and they play knight f5. If you take off this knight, this pawn on e6 just got distracted from the defense of the d5 pawn. So now this pawn on d5 is extremely weak, right? We're playing this move of c3. And okay, I mean, here black has a lot of different options. b3 is an option, in which case we have c4. b takes a3 can be played as well, but again, we're going to play c4, right? Attacking the queen. And notice how weak d5 is. This black queen cannot defend it any longer. It has to run away. And now we're simply going to capture on d5, continue to push with d6. And this is a fantastic position for white, right? Knight takes a3 in the air, bishop e3 pinning the knight. I could even see someone playing knight c3 and throwing the knight into d5. These pawns are very far advanced, but in all honesty, they're not very weak, right? I mean, if black plays something like f6, trying to undermine them, the position's simply going to get blown open right which is in, which is very much in our favor we have the edge in development and in activity so going back to that move in which case we had c3 if you see something like b3 or b takes a3 play c4 and you're going to be you know attacking that pawn on d5 which is going to be great news for us here if you see the move of b captures on c3 okay we take back with the knight again directly attacking that queen you know, something like bishop captures on a3, we're simply going to go knight b1, attacking the queen, double attacking the bishop, and thanks for the piece. And here, if you see something like bishop e6, we play rook b1. This is one of black's better tries, and the computer actually says that there's a very tiny advantage to the black side. But all that being said, I personally think that this is a much better position for white from the practical side of things, right? Black is up a pawn, but d5 is extremely weak. f5 is weak. The dark squares are weak. There's just so many different issues that black has to worry about. So many different outposts that the white pieces potentially have available and not a ton of outposts that the black pieces have available in a position like this, right? War castled, black simply isn't yet. And we're going to continue on to try to play fun and aggressive and really just offbeat chess, right? So that's covering the move of queen a5. Now, going back to the original position, in which case we played the move of b4 again. Most of the time, you're going to see you know, this move of c takes b4. 
that's what's played almost every single time. Knight c6 is actually a pretty close second. Knight c6 is popular. And against that, okay, I mean, we'll take it, right? If you play knight c6, we'll take on c5, play d4 and c3. We get that great center, and we didn't even have to give up a pawn for it. What else could black do here? Well, there's two very rare responses. So if you're a French defense player and you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do against this? I have two recommendations for you, and you can decide which one you like the most. One of them is b6, and the other is d4. Okay, let's first cover the move of b6. In this case, I think it's in white's best interest to just play a move like c3 right notice here by the way i mean black could take on b4 but it's not really going to do anything a5 we have b5 making some space here is why we're going to play a3 and d4 and again d4 again is not going to be able to get attacked by a c pawn if you take on b4 we have queen a4 with check and knight c6 does defend the bishop but the knight doesn't have any help right take the knight get the heck out of there we're up a piece for a pawn so going back to that move of c3 uh, taking on b4 doesn't really do much. If you see something on knight c6, there's some different options here. There's actually some pretty split decisions in terms of white trying to do different things. But I like this move of b5, right? Just making some space. Make some space. Play the move d4, right? Play the move of bishop d3. Just play natural chess here. Knight f5, castle king side. And here if we move like bishop e7, always remember that this knight is going to feel a little bit awkward, right? Just like we saw in the earlier variation with the knight on g6 we had g3 and h4 in this particular instance g4 is a great move right great move if knight h4 we take off that knight and then we continue with an f4 push just charging down the king side of the board a really fun game there and if knight h6 we'll slow down a little bit we'll play h3 but i mean talk about a very awkward knight right if castle and king side we can take this knight off at any point I mean, just giving black double isolated pawns right in front of their king. We have a knight on a5. And in all honesty, black's position looks a little bit discombobulated, right? And we're not even down a pawn. So that's the first one. All that being said, going back to that move of b4, b6 is an option for black that they can think about. But I still think that black can have some issues there. With the move of d4, this kind of gets rid of white even trying to play d4 ourselves right so let's just throw that out the window if d4 is played d4 for us can't happen right and that's really the soul of this opening right distracting that pawn or taking the pawn and then playing d4 and getting that very solid center but in this case okay change of plans we're going to take on c5 and play bishop a3 offering up a trade right if you want to take on a3 okay we'll capture back if you play something like queen a5 which is what i see the most when i look at online games we can now play this move of queen e2 a little bit of a tricky option but i'm a fan of it Okay, we're eyeing the square of b5. If, if black wants to play something like bishop d7, okay, we'll take off the bishop, and we have a pretty even game there. Here, if black plays something like bishop captures on a3, we actually have queen b5 with check, right? Something like knight c6. Okay, we'll trade off queens, and then we'll win the bishop on a3, evening out the material. And if you take on b5 with the queen, we take with the check. And uh, in this instance, we actually don't even have to take again, right? We don't have to take because the knight defends the bishop on the b-file, right? So, okay, bishop takes, knight captures back. We're looking at squares like c7 and d6. If you see king d7, we can continue to charge forward with knight d6 or just snatch off that pawn. And I think it goes without saying that black here is simply in a very hard spot. White here with the edge. The biggest thing that I see is just the fact that white has a space advantage. This pawn on e5 is advanced, but at the moment it's not a weakness. And if you compare the knights, right, white's knights are much, much more active than black's, right? In fact, none of these pieces have even left their starting squares, right, at this point when you look at the position. So very fun, you know, middle game going into the end game position for white in that instance. Uh, but again, I would say going back for black, if you're trying to res you know, find a response for black, uh, going back to that queen a5 line, and you see this tricky little queen e2, just play the move bishop d7, and you'll have yourself uh, you know, nearly equal game, uh, very playable for black to say the least. All that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video, and let me know what you think of it in the comment sections below. Let me know if you want to see a wing gambit against the Sicilian defense as well. Hey guys, wanted to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters for the month of February in 2023. Appreciate you guys a ton. And if you haven't checked out the Patreon before, make sure to go check it out. There's a lot of Patreon exclusive benefits that you can gain. And I'd love to have you join the crew.